breakout series is continuing, but it is shifting from the book of Acts for a couple of weeks to the life of Jesus, actually the last week of his life. He's got his own breakout story, and next Sunday he's going to be breaking out of his own grave. This Sunday he's breaking into the city of Jerusalem. It's Palm Sunday, in case you hadn't figured that out yet. I mean, the kids helped us remember that. It's a Christian holiday, coming from the word holy day. And I was thinking about about holiday sermons. You know, at Christmas, you get the birth sermon. Next Sunday, Easter, you get the resurrection sermon. On Palm Sunday, you get the confusion sermon, actually. It's the mistaken identity sermon. It's, It's the don't recognize Jesus sermon. I mean, the people think that they recognize him, but they actually don't fully recognize him. This is the beginning of his last week of his earthly life. The disciples are with him. This is it. This is, this is the moment of truth. There's no backing out now. And, and here's the story that we're going to take up this morning. It'll be on the screen. It's Matthew 21. And this is how it goes. It says, when, when they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethpage, at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, go into the village ahead of you and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, the Lord needs them and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophets saying, and here he's quoting the Old Testament prophet Zechariah, tell the daughter of Zion, look, your king is coming to you humble and mounted on a donkey and on a colt, the foal that is an under one-year-old colt of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They, They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna, that is, Lord, save us, Lord, help us. Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. So they're coming down from the Mount of Olives. They're making their way through the Kidron Valley, and then up to the Temple Mount in Jerusalem, the east side of that. When he entered Jerusalem, it says, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, who is this? The crowds were saying, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Then Jesus entered the temple and drove out all who were selling and buying in the temple, and he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. He said to them, it is written, now again he's quoting, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you're making it a den of robbers. The blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he cured them. But when the chief priests and the scribes saw the amazing things that he did and heard the children crying out in the temple, Hosanna to the son of David, they became angry and said to him, do you hear what these are saying? In other words, this is outrageous. You've got to stop this. Jesus said to them, yes, yeah, I hear what they're saying. And then he kind of gives them a little jab. Have you ever never read? In other words, there's this book called the Bible. You ever read that? (laughs) And now he's quoting, out of the mouths of infants and nursing babies, you have prepared praise for yourself. Have you never read that? He left them, went out of the city to Bethany, about two miles away, and spent the night there. End of story. Lots of confusion. And in the midst of the confusion, regardless, Jesus is making this big impression on people. And he's very calculated, he's very careful about what kind of an impression that he's making on them, what kind of a mark he's going to leave on them. You know, just just showing up in this village of Bethpage on the Mount of Olives, that's already making an impression. The Jewish faith at that time associated the Mount of Olives 
with the coming of the Messiah King. And listen to this. It's going to be on the screen again from the prophet Zechariah 14.4. On that day, that is the coming, the day of the coming of the Lord, his feet shall stand on the Mount of Olives which lies before Jerusalem on the east. Jesus knows exactly what he's doing. And he's making this impression that sends a very strong message. And this is the message. The Messiah King has arrived. And then he gets on a donkey with its colt. And that makes a further impression, just as the prophets Isaiah and Zechariah foretold. Jesus conforms his entry to that picture. He's coming into Jerusalem on a donkey according to the script. Not on a war horse, not on a chariot, not on a tank. And the locals know the script. They read the symbolism, they get the message loud and clear, and so they roll out the red carpet. The first thing that they do, they, they start laying cloaks and branches on the ground to keep the dust down. That's what you did when a dig dignitary came to town. And then the crowds are running ahead and behind him shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David. That's a messianic title, a royal title. And it's a cry of jubilation equivalent to God save the king, long live the king. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. In other words, God bless, God save, God protect the king with all the resources of heaven itself. And this throws the city into a state of confusion. I mean, you, you heard it in verse 10. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil. Turmoil. The Greek word there is esaiste. We get our word seismic from that word. I mean, the place was shaken. Like all of us after an earthquake. And, and all Jerusalem was asking, what is going on? Who is this guy? Yeah, I was, I was sitting in the Royal Shakespeare Company Theater in Stratford-on-Avon in England in the fall of 19, a long time ago. <laughs> and I was waiting for Shakespeare's comedy, The Taming of the Shrew, to get started. How many of you seen The Taming of the Shrew? Know that story. It's just the story of willful woman against willful man and the struggle there. There was an elaborate set on the stage English village, early 17th century, just a period piece. First scene, according to the script, according to the play, you know, starts with Christopher Sly asleep in a field, just a few yards from the tavern at the edge of the village. Christopher Sly, he's this minor character. He's easily dominated by women in contrast to Petruchio, who is not easily dominated by women. But Christopher Sly, yeah, we, we were waiting for all that. We were sitting there waiting, and then from the back of the theater, kind of like through those center doors, there was this great commotion. We all turned around. The ushers were very agitated. Suddenly, a man burst through the doors from the lobby, beer bottle in hand. He's staggering down the center aisle. He's just three sheets to the wind. This guy is just schnockered. He is, he's gone. And he's yelling, I don't need a ticket. I want to see William Shakespeare myself. And he's coming down. The ushers, the ushers are after him. They're trying to get a hold of him. He jumps onto the stage. And we're watching just in, in astonishment and disbelief. Our hearts are pounding. He starts yanking down the set. The entire thing collapses. The lights flicker. There's an electrical explosion. All the props then instantly and mechanically are removed. He collapses on the stage, and we're sitting there just, our guts are in a knot, and we're, we're wondering, what is happening? Who is this guy? And then a dry ice fog machine blows a layer of fog across the stage. We got our answer. It was Christopher Sly. <laughs> Taming of the Shrew, Act 1, Scene 1. All Jerusalem has its guts all tied up in a knot. They're asking, who is this guy? And the crowd answers, this is the prophet Jesus of Nazareth, taming of Jerusalem, act one, scene one. Scene two, he makes his way into the temple. He's going to make an impression on the church folks now. This massive cathedral-like complex 
center of the Jewish faith, and like a true prophet, he starts cleaning house. The place is looking more like a swap meet than a church. People are selling all kinds of religious junk, souvenirs, vegetables, animals, sacrifices, and offerings for the whole ordeal, exchanging foreign currency, making a killing off the religious pilgrims who are there to worship the living God. Jesus walks in. He is not pleased. And he gets aggressive. He doesn't hurt anybody, but he does break up some furniture and some merchandise. He kicks these people off the property, and he's quoting Isaiah and Jeremiah, these great prophets of Israel, as he does it. He's saying, this is a house of prayer. You're making it into a hideout for criminals. Making an impression, isn't he? Interesting first impression. I had this friend in high school by the name of Kevin. And he was skiing in Utah. He was an only child. He was with his parents. But he was skiing alone, you know, at this resort. His parents were somewhere else on, on the mountain. And, and he had his eye on this girl he, he saw. And she was with a group of people, but it looked like she wasn't really attached to anybody, no, no obvious boyfriend. And, and he wants to meet her. But he's having trouble getting, getting near her. And then about midday, he was near the bottom of one of the runs, and he sees her down below, standing in the lift line by herself. He says, this is, this is my opportunity. And this was a very steep kind of last portion of the run, uh, a large mogul field, you know, all the bumps and dips. And, and he's just, he's an excellent skier. He's just saying, well, I'm going to make a, a real impression on her, ski down, just burn up this last part of the hill. And get right next to her, introduce myself, hop on the lift with her, and, and there, it's, there it is. So, so he takes off, and he's blasting down through these moguls. About three-quarters of the way down, he hits some ice, he loses control, and he falls. He doesn't just fall, he falls. And he starts bouncing the rest of the way down. I mean, it's a disaster. He's attracting all kinds of attention, including hers at the bottom of the hill. He's losing equipment, tumbling. It's fortunately following him down the hill. And he slides about the last 30 feet and, and literally comes to a stop almost at her feet. <laughs> and he looks up and he says, this is true, he says, hi, my name's Kevin. How do you like me so far? <laughs> I mean, just the presence of mind and... <laughs> You know, he just said, here I am. What are you going to do about me? And he gets up, he gathers his stuff. They go on the lift together. They ski together the rest of the day. You know, mission accomplished. <laughs> Jesus Christ makes a royal entry into the city. He shakes up this city. He cleans out the church. He starts healing people in the church. Question, how do you like me so far? What are you going to do about me? What kind of an impression am I making on you? And that's, that's really what this morning is about. That's what the story is about. It's about what you're going to do with the person of Jesus Christ. And the Bible says that he actually then started healing people, and the little children were shouting his praises. Remember that part? And, and the religious officials, the professional ministers, tried to shut the kids up, get them out of there, shut Jesus down. I mean, what's your response to the person of Jesus Christ this morning? Are you happy with him? Excited about him? Or are you confused about him? Or are you threatened by him? Those are the basic three responses. Final question this morning, actually, too, in the story, Jesus does three things. I mean, he accepts the praise from the crowds. Number two, he cleans out and cleans up the temple, makes a start at that. And number three, he starts healing people. Now, if he were to walk in here next Sunday morning, which of the three things would he do? Would he accept the praise? Would he start cleaning house? 
What do you start healing people? If he were to walk into your house this afternoon, which one of the three things would he do? Would he accept praise if he found any? Would he start cleaning up the place? Or would he start healing people? The last line of this story is is interesting, isn't it? Verse 17, it says that he left them and he went out of the city to Bethany and spent the night there. Long day, gave the city some time to think. Some of you maybe need some time to think about those questions that I ask you. Take it. Come back Thursday night, 7 p.m. There's more to this story. Come back next Sunday morning. There's even more to the story. We're preparing ourselves for Holy Week. It's, it's starting right now. Let's, let's bow our heads, and I want to pray for you. Father, we come to you through the Son and the power of the Holy Spirit right now in the authority and the permission of Jesus through whom we have come into full adoption as sons and daughters of you, the living God, and we come with confidence and boldness. And I just ask that we honestly face those questions about what we're going to do with you and what you're going to do with us. Receive praise, clean house, or start healing, or some combination of the three. I pray that each person here would get in touch with how they really feel about you, whether they're happy to see you, whether they're confused by you, whether they're threatened by you. Show yourself in all of your glory and all of your humility and all of your beauty and goodness and truth to each one this morning and this week. And we pray this in your name. Amen.